If you're driving down the road way too fast, maybe you're late, you're in a hurry, but you are moving down the road and you see the blue lights in the rear view mirror, what do you expect is going to happen, right? Let's just say you have a new job, but you don't show up for the first week. And when you do start showing up, you don't do anything they ask you to do. What do you think is going to happen with that job? Or maybe you're a student. Do you go to class uh, rarely and you never hardly show up and you never turn in any assignments? And when the final grade comes, what grade do you expect to receive? What do you expect to happen? You know, we've been talking about the parable of the talents. And uh, I think that we live in a world and a society now that for some reason thinks that uh, individuals believe they should get something other than what is expected, right? They should get out of the ticket because it's really not their fault that they're late. And they, the teacher should have mercy on them and give them a good grade, even though they didn't do any of the work. And the boss shouldn't get angry and fire them because uh, they should know they have other things going on other than that job, right? And that's the way our society has become. But I think if we look at the parable of the talents, and the three individuals who received the talents, the five, the two, and the one talents, we see that they got exactly what they expected. Right, the two that done a great job, that got the five and the two and they doubled their money, those individuals should not have been surprised when their uh, master come back and was excited. He's like, you guys did a great job. They shouldn't have been surprised when they were rewarded for doing exactly what the master told them to do, right? Because they had done a great job and they were doing what they were supposed to do, making their master look good. And then we see this other individual, the, the individual who did nothing, right? He buried the, the, the bag of silver. He didn't do anything with it. He just hid it away. And he shouldn't be surprised with the punishment that he got, right? He shouldn't be surprised when his master comes back and is like, you didn't do anything the whole time I was gone? You mean all this time I've been away trying to work, plan, build, and this whole time you've done nothing? You've just hid away what I've given you and basically sat on it and done nothing. Should he be surprised that he was punished for what he did? No, and I think that we look at this uh, in our society and we look at God in a way of, well, his word says this, but he's not going to do that. And we can't be that way because we should expect to get exactly what God's word said that we should get. We live in an unprecedented age where every home has probably more than one of these in it. If you're a Christian home, look, look behind me, Bibles. Uh, Bible in my hand, Bible on my phone, Bible on the internet. You know, there's Bible everywhere. We have unprecedented access to the Word of God. We can read it anytime we want to. We can have it read to us anytime we want to. There is no excuse for us to stand before God on the day of judgment and say, I really didn't expect this to happen. You know, I didn't expect you to punish me because I didn't do anything with what you gave me. I didn't expect you to punish me because I didn't accept your son, Jesus Christ. Uh, every one of us should stand before God and be like, well, that's exactly what I expected to happen. Just like we would when the police officer pulls us over and we're doing 100 in a 50. We should expect to get a ticket. We should expect to get fired at the job where we don't show up and don't do what we're supposed to do. If we have a class and we don't do the work, we should expect to get a failing grade because that's the standard. God has given us a standard. God has set it forth in his word, and we should expect exactly what this word says. And for us to do that, we need to be writing it. We need to be studying it. We need to be looking at it every day. We need to be hiding it away in our hearts, and we should be asking God to reveal himself to us. So do not be surprised to get exactly what is expected of you. And God expects a lot of his people. God expects us to be faithful. God expects us to use the talents that he has given us to expand and grow his kingdom. And when he comes back, he's going to judge us by those standards. Uh, this concludes our study of the parable of talents. We'll start a new parable next time. But we want to remind you there's four things a disciple of Jesus Christ will do every day. You'll seek to encounter God. You'll exalt God. You'll edify yourself by reading the word of God. And by all means, you'll engage this world for Jesus Christ. Until next time, God bless.